So for today's video, I wanted to start discussing some mythological stories and symbolism to start actually establish how these stories work in society and how you can actually apply them in your own life as a structure and a psychological model to start helping you develop. And what better way to start with but the story of Prometheus. Prometheus! So, as many of you might know, Prometheus is a Greek titan. He is actually credited with the creation of humanity. He made them out of clay, so he is a creator god. But at the same time, he is also a trickster god. He really moves between the delineation rather fluidly and helps humanity whilst also being a trickster towards the gods themselves. Now, Prometheus is a very interesting character because his story is actually why humans have the capability to create and give life their own interpretation and give the spark of creativity into their creations and their buildings because it is Prometheus who gives us that ability. So before we start the discussion, I wanted to actually start with the story of Prometheus himself. So before you actually start the story of Prometheus, you need to have a bit of context. He is one of two brothers, so Prometheus and Epimetheus. Now his brother Epimetheus is the titan of hindsight, so he can only look back and see what he has done wrong or right. He can only look back into the past and move on from there. Prometheus, on the other hand, is the titan of foresight, so he can look into the future and see what his actions are going to result in. This means that he is a sort of prophetic titan and he has the ability to anticipate and generate ideas depending on what the future needs. Now, after creating humanity with his brother Epimetheus, who creates animals and gives them all their abilities and all their physical attributions such as claws and scales, Prometheus actually really appreciates his creation and he actually molds humanity in the image of the gods. You can start to see some parallels here between the Genesis story. Um, Prometheus actually decides to mold humans after the gods, as I said, and Zeus actually, who was actually the king of the gods at the time, tells Prometheus that they must stay inferior to the gods and actually worship the gods, so they cannot ascend unless they are given the right to do so by the gods themselves. Now Prometheus does not like this very much, and he actually wants to give humanity something so that they can have a better existence. He notices that the humans are actually sacrificing to the gods, but they are sacrificing all the good parts of their sacrifice. The gods get to eat all the good things, while the humans are left with the scraps. Now the gods already have ambrosia, and so they can feast on really good um, resources, but the humans are left with nothing. So what Prometheus does is he takes a bull, he kills the bull, and he separates two dishes. One, he puts all the good meat in the dish, but he covers it with a layer of, of um, stuff that is usually undesirable when you eat an animal. On the other one, he actually puts all the bones and all the scraps, but he covers it with a layer of juicy fat. Now he goes to Zeus and he actually asks him to eat one of, to choose one or the other. Zeus, seeing that the fat looks much juicier, decides to pick the letter dish. And so Zeus has chosen to eat the bones and the scraps with a layer of fat that doesn't really entail anything of substance. The humans actually get the good parts of the sacrifice and from now on humans get to actually enjoy their own killings and their own sacrifices and their own meals. Zeus is furious at this, he actually takes revenge upon the humans by taking away their fire. This means that he has taken away their capability to fend for themselves, work, to create shelter, to actually cook their food properly, and he keeps fire for himself. <laughs> Prometheus decides that this will not fly, and so what he does is he sneaks up back onto Olympus, he takes the fire, and he gives it back to humanity. Zeus does not know of this, but the humans actually start to use the fire, and it spreads more and more and more. They start to use it for shelter, to use it to cook food, but they also use it to wage war upon each other. Notice this dual notion of fire being a productive source, but also a destructive force. Zeus finds out eventually, because the fires start to light up everywhere around the world, and when he looks down upon the earth from his mountaintop, he decides that this trickery from Prometheus will not fly as well. So he captures Prometheus, he actually chains him to a mountain, and as punishment, he makes an eagle fly down every evening to eat his liver. Now, being a titan, he will actually regenerate his liver. That means that he will endure the suffering day after day after day until all eternity. Now, 
what does this mean for Prometheus? What does he represent? Now, Prometheus is a titan of foresight. He can actually anticipate what his actions will entail. This means that he knows somewhat that his action to steal the fire from the gods will result in him being punished and punished severely at that. Yet he decides to do so and to steal the fire. This means that him, as an immortal, actually takes the side of the humans and wants to generate this creative power in humanity. He does not want humanity to just be a stagnant society who just worships the divine. He wants it to flourish on its own and to make its own creative potential. That is what the fire represents. It is the fire of imagination, of creativity. It is something that actually generates life and something that creates and molds society into whatever humanity needs. Now Prometheus really takes a place in the cultural zeitgeist and literature as even Percy Shelley actually writes an entire play about this named Prometheus Unbound and he actually depicts Prometheus as not having any regrets as to stealing the fire. He knows that he was going to be punished but he has no regrets because he wants to challenge the divine authority of the gods which keeps humanity locked in their own basic human mortal function. One can actually compare Prometheus to Milton's Satan in Paradise Lost but the difference there is that Satan in his taking away of the, the apple and giving it to Eve to eat is actually motivated by a sort of melancholy and hate and grief whereas Prometheus is actually motivated by the human's capacity to actually flourish and push forth in their societies. This distinction is actually quite important because Prometheus is depicting an aspect of humanity which is dual in the sense that they take upon their own burdens and they actually work and go against certain authorities to move forward. However, there is also a dark side to Prometheus and his actions. Mary Shelley, also Percy Shelley's wife, actually writes Frankenstein. She writes this at the age of 18 actually, as a writing competition between a few other major authors of the time. But what Mary Shelley decides to depict is the dark side of the taking away of the, that create a spark from the divine authority to actually shape and give life its meaning. And the doctor, Frankenstein, creates an abomination which is verging on life but it is, it is not actually fully alive. And this creature is constantly tormented by a certain desire to become one with nature and to understand itself and it has a very intelligent intellect actually as opposed to however Frankenstein's monster is usually depicted in um, media and culture he is actually a very intelligent being but having been created from a human he cannot actually grasp that full potential of human life's creativity so this is the dark side of Prometheus's action and in this case Frankenstein is depicted as the Promethean character I am it alive! It's alive! now as one might notice the thing that separates Prometheus from Frankenstein or Satan is the ability of foresight. He can actually anticipate what he's going to do. This means that he knows where his dark side might lead to. And this particular distinction of having foresight is actually very, very important. Why? When you take Prometheus as a societal hero, as a hero of culture, of giving humanity that ability to strive on its own, on its own production, you need to take into account the the sheer possibility of the creations having a dark side. This means that it can apply directly to our culture today. We are advancing as a 21st century society, we are constantly creating new things, we are creating new modes of living, we are shaping the world into our own comfort and making it our own basically playing ground. We have, so to speak, taken the authority from the gods and given it to humanity and we decide whatever we decide to do with it. However, that comes with dark side. You can see this with global warming issues, with a lot of bio bioengineering issues. These are real realities that when we are giving the creative power, we need to address. Prometheus is actually showing us that even though he, you can take this fire of creativity and shape reality, you need to have foresight. He is the titan of foresight. Without that, he would have just given fire away and he knows that and he would not have known that his creation would actually lead to somewhere very very dangerous and even if it does lead to a situation where we have to suffer Prometheus actually shows us that he is able to endure that suffering because the will to creativity 
is far more superior than the suffering that we have to endure. This is what Prometheus is basically showing us. We can actually see that Prometheus is incarnated once again in a culture hero that we see nowadays, and that is Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. The character of Iron Man actually depicts this kind of dilemma. Iron Man is a genius, Tony Stark, and he actually discovers a new element, he creates a multi-billion corporation, and he actually at first uses this to promote war, but he realizes this after an experience by when he is caught by terrorists, and he decides to turn his technology in favor of humanity. He gives all of his creative power into serving humanity. Through his, uh, his ideologies and his opinions, especially in civil war, can be questioned sometimes, but he nonetheless represents this Promethean hero. He takes the creative power to himself and he actually shapes the world around him. Instead, when you, when you compare him, for example, to Captain America, where the powers are given to him by an authority, and he actually serves in keeping the dignity of that authority alive. Iron Man, on the other hand, is actually creating his own world, creating his own tech, and he is shaping the world around him. And, ironically enough, spoilers for Endgame, he is the one to save all of mankind after the Thanos snap, actually. Um, the symbolism here is clear, he has the power of the gauntlet in his hand, in the same way that Prometheus has the power of creator, creative fire in his hand as he descends Mount Olympus. Iron Man snaps his fingers in defiance of Thanos, which can be represented as the tyrannical Zeus, which is just trying to keep reality in check, whereas Prometheus or Iron Man is giving humanity the chance to shape its own reality and actually mold the world in its own vision. Iron Man. So, long story short, how can Prometheus be applied in everyday life? We have seen how he is actually still very much alive nowadays, especially in figures such as Elon Musk, or Steve Jobs, these are people who are actually taking the creative power and shaping it into your own ways of deciding to actually shape reality. But how can you actually apply this in your own life? Well, Prometheus represents your creative force, it re represents your desire to actually branch away from structures and create your own crea cre creation basically. He is promoting this attitude of taking the fire within you, which is locked away, it is usually locked away by authority. It is suppressed, when you take it out and you actually manifest it in reality, you can create anything you want. But, you need to keep an open eye as to what your actions might result in. You need to be able to endure the suffering if you have decided on a wrong action, and you basically give forth this creative power and you let it loose in the world with discernment and with a very careful authority of your own being. So that was the first in a short series of seeing how these mythology, mythological um, ideas and characters and stories actually apply into our life. Prometheus is one of the easiest to start with because the further you go along the more complicated the symbolism becomes and the more it starts to collapse on itself and actually refer to other storylines and different mythologies start to refer to, re to each other. You just have to notice the patterns. I just did that with Marvel, with Frankenstein and with a Greek Titan. The symbolism remains there, it is the form that changes. And when you notice these symbols, you can actually take them and apply them and see how they actually fit into your own contemporary life. These are not just stories of old that you can just leave them and you can just ignore them. They are directly applicable. You keep these ideas in your head and in your soul and when you, you're actually embarking on something, you can actually refer to these stories and use them as a basic landscape to actually push forth in your creative endeavors. Now, not, not all of them have this kind of nuance, some are less nuanced, or they are kind of simpler stories, but others, when they take on uh, uh, an entire worldview, they create a cosmos in their own mythological symbolism, it becomes more complicated. But I think we have started from a very good place, and we have actually applied it directly to the cultural themes that we see today. Continuing on from this, we will be addressing several different characters from different mythologies. Um, we can use Greek mythology as an example as well, but we can use African and Yoruba stories, we can use Egyptian stories, we can actually use religious stories from today. So actually Christian ideas, Buddhist ideas, and the list goes on. 
But other than that, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you're starting to see how relevant these stories are and you can actually apply them directly. And other than that, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Prometheus!